Hey, how's it going, everybody? Dan Schoender here on Drum Talk TV. Uh, not very cleaned up. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Just been working, but hey, today's not a formal event. It's casual Monday. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Are, are you doing well? Is everything okay in your world? I hope so. Hope it's getting better. Um, I'm broadcasting to you from Globe, Arizona, 100 miles east of Phoenix. Let me know where you are watching from. Feel free to be part of the conversation. As you can tell by my shirt, I couldn't find my purple Drum Talk TV shirt, so I put this on. And because I'm feeling kind of purple today, I've been listening to a lot of, um, uh, and I have a funny story, I've been listening to a lot of Deep Purple the last couple days. And uh, there's this channel I found. Oh, shoot. There's this channel I found that I think is kind of new. It's called um, Ian Pace Drum Tribe on YouTube. Funny story. Um, iconic, one of the most iconic live rock albums, of course, is Made in Japan, 1972 in Osaka by Deep Purple, right? He's got the Ludwig kit with the 26-inch bass drum, the, the 18 and 20-inch floor toms, and a... Believe it or not, I th it's a 16 by 10 rack, Tom, he said in this episode that um, I'm going to share on Jump Talk TV soon. Or you could find it. But here's the funny thing. It just breaks my heart. Um, someone asked what happened to the Made in Japan kit and do you still have it? He read that question and said, no. <laughs> and then he explained that years ago, not not that long ago, but like maybe 15 years ago, um, Someone said there's this there's this kid in the neighborhood who's a drummer but has kind of a rubbish drum kit. You think you could help him out? So the, he had made arrangements. The young guy came over, a teenager, and Ian opened the garage and and basically just grabbed the first kit that was there, and said, um, "Why don't you take this one, and um, you know use it for a while, and then I'll get it back." This and that. And he said he never heard from the guy or saw him again, and he later figured out, yes, it was the Made in Japan kit. What the fuck? Come on, Ian, really? Oh, my God. So I got to uh, call him up on that one. Man, I, 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 I give him uh, – I'm bringing you up on the monitor here, so let me know where you're watching from. I give him kudos for being so transparent and human about sharing that story. What a goof that was, right? That's like that's like losing John Bonham's Amber Vista Light kit, you know, from the Song Remains the Same movie or his uh his chrome Ludwig kit from seventy seven through the end there or just you know, name any famous kit. Ringo Starr's oyster finish, you know, whatever. So I thought that was funny. So um what I realized before we started and I was hooking stuff up and did a sound check was I listened to Deep Purple a lot. used to play it a lot, a lot, a lot in a band and all this stuff. But I realized that I don't really remember it very well when it comes to telling my my hands uh, what to do. I'm going to turn this camera just a touch. And, 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 Joe, and Joe wants to know how's the signal and everything. Um, let us know how the signal is. Oh, wow, and there's uh, subtitles again. How funny. I have no idea how I turned that on. Anyhow, so getting the music up here to get my hands and fingers to remember has not been good. I had to do the beginning of Highway Star like six times because the mix is weird and I couldn't hear the ba ta ga ta ga ta ga ba 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 which helps with this so you know where they're coming in. And, of course, Ian, ooh. You know, doing that over and over. One of my favorite singers ever, by the way. The man is amazing in his 70s and still cranking it out like that. Uh, so I'm going to do my best. If you have a deep purple, um, oh, someone says video keeps freezing. Thanks, Aaron. Um, Mike in, oh, South Wales. Hey, uh, where Bron your R is. Um, Brandon Koo, what's up? Hey, Brandon. Brandon's watching. <laughs> and just says, hey, uh, Delena Oberman, Flint, Michigan. Let me see if I could read this properly. Dagi Desta. Dan, I'm watching you from Ethiopia. Wow, nice. Thank you. Uh, feed keeps locking, says Mike Skinner. So if you need to cut that camera, I guess. Um, yeah, cut that, I guess. So we're still working on some internet adjustments. Ah, 
Um, but anyhow, I'm going to uh, take a stab at Highway Star. In the meantime, throw out some Deep Purple songs. And I have a surprise Deep Purple song that you've never, ever heard unless you watch this show and have seen me do it on this. So bear with me. I'm going to have some fun uh, trying to play Highway Star from Machine Head so it might get muted. So I don't know. There might be a delay in me getting the mute freed up in the archive. We'll see if you're watching it on the archive. But Ian is just a, such a eloquent drummer, so much finesse. There's a lot of jazz influence, not just in Ian, but in Deep Purple's music. We'll get to that on another song. Let's go for Highway Star. Let's see what happens here.
So that's funny. I, I blew the one part I thought I had down. So Deep Purple, wow, that's some of my early, uh, some of my early musical upbringings. I first heard Deep Purple um, when Machine Head came out in 1972, and uh, I got that album. And I have a picture I'll show in another live. I just didn't think to do it for this one. Of the first time I interviewed Ian, um, I explained afterwards he was signing a bunch of drum heads for us that we give away charity and stuff like that for auctions. And I brought my Machine Head album, and I explained to him, this is the first Deep Purple album that I ever got. And I said, my mom bought it for me when we went to the record store in 1972 when it came out. And there's this great picture the photographer took of me holding it, and it's open because, you know, it's an open-up album cover. And he's smiling and reaching for it. He couldn't wait to, like, like, let me see that. You know, he hasn't seen the album version in so long where artwork was bigger and you could really appreciate it and see all the pictures. It was uh, really a fun time. Um, so Ian, very down-to-earth guy. I'm going to check the comments and uh, hope the feed is a little better since we turned off one of the cameras. Hopefully it's not for everybody else. Thanks to bring this out to me up a little bit more. Hey, um, as she pointed something out, I forgot to mention. Um, I'll get to in a second. Uh, so vid does keep freezing. Thanks, Dennis. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, Delena says, unfortunately, the feed comes for like three or four seconds. You know, fuck is all I could say to that. I'm really sorry. Um, and now it says feed interrupted. Unbelievable. Okay. Okay, yeah, and, and just says that on the controller, everything's smooth, so I'm not sure what's up. Ray Childs, what's going on? Brian Blatt in Reading, Ray in Salt Lake. Um, so she says, hey, your drum set's looking different. That's because all last week was uh, John Bonham tribute. Uh, oh, Ray, I'll read that in a second. Uh, Mike Skinner, thank you. Uh, says my kit looks different. That's because all week was John Bonham tribute week for his birthday, and I didn't make the time to set up the new big blue kit, so I thought, oh, what could I play today? And since I was listening to Deep Purple anyways for a while, um, I thought this would be good. So uh, hence that Deep Purple, and uh, this, this feed just sucks. I see that it's horrible here, but I want to read what Ray Child says in Salt Lake City. He says, I donated kit two years ago to a foster kid I met at Guitar Center. I really... Uh, who really wanted to play, I guess. Is that what that means? Uh, he said he was in foster care and couldn't afford a drum set. I bought him a drum set and handed him a drum key. So here's the key to your career, sky's the limits. That is really sweet, Ray. That's great. I wish everybody could be that compassionate uh, for others in need, especially when it comes to youngsters and music. Um so, hmm, what do we do? Do we want to, I don't know what to do. <laughs> this might suck so bad we might have to just bail. So, hey, just real quick, real quick. Um, uh, sign up for the newsletter. The new newsletter comes out late tonight, Monday night, and we've got big, big interviews coming. And I, when I say I mean that, really big interviews coming, I'll give you a hint. Two gentlemen who share the same birthday that are on opposite ends of the planet musically. And they're both just as big a names in their own genre. Have them on, not together, but in the same week coming up. Um, uh, all, all kinds of fun stuff. I might, I might, if enough people give a crap, I might. June 25th was the day 43 years ago I saw Led Zeppelin with my father. And I have a bootleg of that same night at the L.A. Forum. I might play to that whole freaking thing. Maybe. We'll see. If this feed crap keeps up, I, I probably won't. <laughs> but I see people are jumping off. So maybe no one even got to this part where I'm talking about it yet. I don't know. Um, so uh, is the feed any better? Here, I'm just going to keep a beat. Check the comments. Tell me if the feed is at all improved.
needs even more kids. version of the beginning of that song so is anyone still with us at all man this is so uh frustrating oh the picture looks clearer so let me know is the feed any better in the meantime oh here's some trivia in the meantime tell me if the feed's any better what distinction does ian pace hold with deep purple that no other member holds. Not just that he's the drummer, but what distinction does Ian Pace hold that no other member of Purple can claim? Uh, if you get that right, you win bragging rights. Yes. Um, so let me know, let me know, let me know. Let me know how the feed is, and then we'll... Uh, We'll keep going if it's working. The picture looks better. Wow, this is like so far behind. Um, you know what? Uh, we'll do one more and see how it goes. I'm going to play a version of Lazy you've never heard unless you watch this show. better? <laughs> it's catching up to us. This thing is way back there. All right. So let me explain what's about to happen. Hopefully you can hear me. This is from a CD I recorded 22 years ago. Whoa. And it's a swing version of Lazy. There's no electronic instruments. I'm playing piano, drums. I think I'm playing piano on this one. Maybe not. I'm doing lead vocals. I do the background vocal arrangements with some girls. And the guy who transposed all the horn parts for me was like, man, I barely have to do anything because this song is already a swing song with guitar, bass, drums, organ, and voice. So here we go. Lazy swing version. 
so that's uh, very slightly changed other than t instead of the harmonica, organ, and guitar solo, there's three horns doing the round robin thing. And I love, I'll never forget being in the control room, watching them record that, because they recorded them together, trumpet, sax, and trombone. And uh, when the trombone player did that, -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da, I was like, oh my God, that's circus music right there. <laughs> it was great. Lots of fun, lots of fun. Glasses, glasses. Do we have any more new comments? Is anyone even still watching? Okay, so we're not sure. <laughs> hey, Bryce Butler. Uh, thanks, Ashish. Yuri, how are you? John Cargell, how are you? Darren Hodges. So uh, I don't know if this is still working. If you still hear me, and it may need to catch up, so I might be sitting here 12 minutes waiting, but if you can still hear me, throw out a Deep Purple song as a request, even if it's on the archive. I'll play some more purple, because I'm not in a huge hurry to dismantle this and put all the other stuff. I mean, I love playing the big kit. Love it, love it, love it. But moving all the stuff around, um, it's kind of a pain, because I'm a very important and busy person, as you know. Oh, my wife's giving me the evil eye. <laughs> so uh, any thoughts on Ian Pace? Do you have a favorite tune by Ian, not just from Deep Purple, but with the English version of White Snake, the first version of White Snake? I'll never forget them. Wow, that was amazing. Um, what mock version of Purple do you like the best? Uh, do you like the Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3, like with David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes? Some great songs there with Burn. Stormbringer, You Fool No One is such a great song. You know, maybe I'll pound that out. Um, huh. Do I want to do that? My woman from Tokyo, and just giving me an evil eye because she's not sure it's really working that well. Uh, and I'm not either. So you know what? I think I'll say, I'll go over here, babe. I'll say goodbye for now. Thank you for watching Drum Talk TV. Thanks for putting up with me and especially the technology. <laughs> yeah, and um, we'll be doing this again this week a few times, and I, I, I'm sorry about the signal. I have nothing to do with it. We've cranked everything up. We got a dish on the roof. We got a mesh unit in here. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes it's of oh, what? Oh, really? So it just ended. Okay. All right. So we're not. Oh, so it's over. We're done. Okay. It's still on. Okay. Still on, and I need to wrap it up. Um, sign up for the newsletter. The link is in the post. Big, 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 big interviews coming. I'll give you a hint. One of them. I give you a hint. What's another one? Uh, a guy named Achilles, and it won't be his last stand. Thanks, everybody.